This is a tutorial on understanding polynomials. Well, if we're going to understand polynomials, we first have to know what a polynomial is. A polynomial is just a monomial or several monomials that are added or subtracted. Well, okay, but what's a monomial? Well, a monomial is an expression made up of numbers or variables or the combination of both multiplied together. And a monomial can only have whole number exponents. So 7 would be a monomial. And 3x squared would be a monomial. 99x to the 120 would be a monomial. Now, if a polynomial is a monomial or several monomials that are added or subtracted, then 7 and 3x squared and 99x to the 120, these are all polynomials. And if I started adding or subtracting these, like 7 plus 3x squared, well, that would be a polynomial as well. Or 3x squared plus 99x to the 120, that would be a polynomial as well. So now that we know what a polynomial is, let's see if we can identify some. Which of these expressions are polynomial expressions? Well, here, the first one, we have the square root of x. Well, I can rewrite the square root of x as x to the 1 half. And this 1 half exponent is not a whole number. And remember, monomials and polynomials only have whole number exponents. So since this is x to the 1 half, or the square root of x, this is not a polynomial expression. Next we have x squared. Well, the 2 is a whole number, so yes, this would be a polynomial expression. Our next example, we have 3 divided by x. Well, I can rewrite this as 3 times x to the minus 1. All I'm doing is bringing the x up into the numerator. But since we have this negative 1 exponent, negative 1 is not a whole number. It's an integer. So this is not a polynomial expression. Next, we have 2x squared times y. Well, you can think of this as y to the 1. And 2 and 1 are both whole numbers. And these are just two variables in a constant term, or a number, all multiplied together. So this satisfies all the rules for a polynomial. So yes, this is a polynomial. Our next example is 4x times y to the 1 -third. Well again, this 1 -third here ruins it for us. This is not a whole number exponent. So this is not a polynomial expression. Our last expression is just the number 5. Well, polynomials don't have to have variables. They usually do. But they don't have to. So this 5 is a monomial and therefore qualifies as a polynomial. So yes, this would be a polynomial expression. Well, now that we know what a polynomial is, let's talk about the standard form of a polynomial. The standard form of a polynomial is just a way of writing the polynomial so it looks like this. Our standard form is written as an times x to the n plus an minus 1 times x to the n minus 1. And this goes all the way down until we hit a1 times x to the first plus a0. And you can think of this a0 as times x to the 0, but x to the 0 is just 1, so we usually don't write that. Now this is kind of confusing looking, but if you realize that these a to the n terms, or these a terms, are all just numbers. And then our x is our variable. So if x is our variable, let's look at the exponents. Here we have n. Then we have n to the minus 1, and this goes all the way down until we have just a 1 and then a 0. So a standard form polynomial then is written just like this example here where we have 5x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 10x plus 7. What's important to notice is that these different terms of our polynomial are written with their exponents in descending order. 
So the highest exponent is always written first, and then the next highest exponent, and then the next highest exponent, and so on. So now that we know how to write a polynomial in standard form, which is just decreasing exponents as we go to the right, let's talk about what a degree and a leading coefficient is. Now the degree of a polynomial is just the highest exponent in that polynomial. So the degree of this example polynomial would be 4. And the leading coefficient then is just the coefficient or the number that the highest degree term has multiplied by it. So if you want to find out what the leading coefficient is, you go find the term of the polynomial that has the highest degree or the highest exponent, which is this first one right here. And you want to know what number is multiplied times that variable. In this case, it's 5. So our leading coefficient would be equal to 5. Now there are several types of polynomials. And these are based on the amount of terms in the polynomial. So if we have a one-term polynomial, we call it a monomial. And we've seen several monomials already. Here are some examples, 5x squared, y cubed, the number 2, these are all monomials. If we have a two-term polynomial, we call it a binomial. And these are all examples of binomials. x minus 2, 3x squared plus 4, 7a to the 19 minus 3a. These are basically two monomials added or subtracted together. So notice these each have two terms. The x is one term, the negative 2 is the other term. 3x squared would be one term and the 4 would be the second. 7a to the 19 would be our first term and minus 3a would be our second term. Now if we have a 30 term polynomial, we call that a trinomial. And trinomials are just three monomials added or subtracted together. Here we have three examples of trinomials and notice they all have three terms in them. And then if we have four or more terms in a polynomial, it doesn't really have a special name. We just call it a polynomial. So now let's look at these examples and we'll write these in standard form and then we'll identify the degree and leading coefficient. Our first example, we have 17x cubed plus 29 minus 45x to the fourth plus 2x. Now if we're going to write this in standard form, that means that our exponents have to go in decreasing order. So the term with the highest exponent would be this negative 45x to the fourth. So this is going to be our first term. The second highest exponent would be the 17x cubed. So this is going to be our second term. The 2x, you can think of this as x to the 1. That's going to be our third highest exponent term. And then the 29, you can kind of think of 29 as 29 times x to the 0, because x to the 0 is just 1. So the 29 then will be our fourth highest exponent term. So if we write these in order, it'll be negative 45 x to the fourth plus 17 x cubed plus 2x plus 29. So this is now written in standard form. So now that we have it in standard form, we need to find the degree and the leading coefficient. Well, our degree is just the highest exponent in the polynomial. In this case, it'd be 4. So our degree then is equal to 4. Our leading coefficient is just the coefficient or the number multiplied by our highest exponent term. So in this case, our leading coefficient is negative 45 because our highest, co our highest exponent term, the x to the fourth, is multiplied by negative 45. So our leading coefficient then is equal to negative 45. Let's look at the next example. Our next example is just the number 8. And you can think of this as 8 times x to the 0, because x to the 0 is just equal to 1. 
So our degree then would be equal to zero. Our leading coefficient is just eight because our x to the zero term is multiplied by eight. And to write this in standard form, well, it's only one term, so it's already in standard form. Let's look at our third example. Here we have x squared minus 7 plus 6x. Well, this x squared, this 2, is our highest coefficient, so this is going to be our first term. And this 6x is our second highest coefficient, so that's going to be our second term. And then the negative 7 will be our third term. So if we write that in standard form, we write it as x squared plus 6x minus 7. So that's in standard form, and now we need to find our degree and our leading coefficient. Well, our degree is just our highest exponent, so that's going to be 2. So our degree for this polynomial is equal to 2. And our leading coefficient is what the x squared term is multiplied by. Well, there's nothing out front of the x squared term, but you can think of this as 1 times x squared. So our leading coefficient then would be equal to 1. Now the last thing we have to talk about are polynomial names. There are several low degree polynomials that have special names. If we have a degree of 0 in our polynomial, we call it a constant. Examples of a constant polynomial would be 7 or 2 or negative 4 because these can all be multiplied by x to the 0 because remember x to the 0 is equal to 1. So these 7, 2, and negative 4 are all constants. Now if we have a degree of 1 in our polynomial we call it a linear polynomial. 3x would be a linear polynomial. 7x minus 2 is a linear polynomial because our highest degree is just 1. So these are all linear polynomials. If we have a degree of 2, we call it a quadratic. Examples of that would be x squared plus 9 or x squared plus 6x plus 5. Our highest degree is 2, so these are all quadratic polynomials. If we have a degree of 3, we call it a cubic. Examples of that would be x cubed plus 6x, 3x cubed plus 7, 2x cubed plus 4x minus 9. These are all cubic polynomials because their highest degree is 3. And then lastly, if we have a degree of 4, we call it a quartic polynomial. An example of a quartic polynomial would be 4x to the fourth plus 7x cubed plus 2x squared plus 4. Our highest term has a fourth degree. So this is a fourth degree or quartic polynomial. And that completes the tutorial on understanding polynomials.